For me, there is no better symbol of the environmental crisis than a plastic bottle. The world buys a million plastic bottles a minute. And every year, if we put them end to end, they would go between here and the moon 30 times back and forth. I want to be able to push a button and have all this plastic sort of go away overnight. And I wish that that could happen. But it's not that simple. Around the world where people who are most affected by the negative and horrible effects of climate change are often uh, in lower socioeconomic areas where coal plants are built, where waste is being dumped into water sources. And the vast majority of the time, it is in minority communities. Uh, I grew up in Sri Lanka and of course, uh, the developing country, these issues uh, very much uh, struck home. It generally went down as life and, and the challenges of life. Um, but then you realize that some of those um, challenges and difficulties that, that people face every day um, are really uh, the manifestation of a number of things that happen outside of the country, outside of a geographic zone. We need to change the way the incentives around the world work because right now we have many, many industries and companies that their business model really depends on using up a lot of resources or polluting the atmosphere. We think either we can turn a profit or we can save the planet. And it's just not true. It's not true at all. We have an ability to get out of the theoretical green economy, all these buzzwords people like to talk about, green jobs, infrastructure jobs, renewable energy, all these things. And it can also be profitable. When it comes to climate change, something we don't often talk a lot about is the immense amount of opportunity that is out there. The amount of resourcing needed to address the climate challenge um, is not going to be solved by government public resources alone. It's going to require uh, the huge uh, uh, you know, reservoirs of private capital, and that is going to require a partnership between government and the private sector. When it comes to preserving the biodiversity that's left on this planet and preserving the planet as a whole, we, we cannot forget that it's going to take every one of us on a global scale. This really is at the core of uh, ultimately what multilateralism means, the ability for countries to come together and work on common problems. And that really is um, why it is incredibly important for the United Nations system as a whole to come together uh, and try and galvanize uh, uh, the kind of mass movement that's needed uh, to see the changes that we all need. The good news about climate change is that we actually know what we have to do. It's not a mystery set of solutions. We know that we need to change the energy systems. We know we need to change the way we get ourselves around when it comes to our transportation systems. We know we need to protect nature. We know we need to help communities to be more resilient. We know we need to change the way the global economy supports certain industries. And we also know that we need to change how we get our food and how our farms function around the world. For UNDP, our priorities first and foremost is to ensure that every country on, on this planet really um, does everything it can to articulate a level of ambition on emissions reduction. And, and they really have to set the bar high here. And it's $5 trillion that we use to support fossil fuel industries around the world. That if we could take that money, you can imagine what we could do with an extra $5 trillion. I mean, I could just sit here forever and talk about all of the possibilities of what those funds could be used to do that would Again, put people to work, they'd be great jobs. The hospitals that we could supply, the schools that we could build, the ways that we could help to transition workforces from fossil fuel jobs to clean energy jobs, the ways that we could change farms, the ways that we could change the way transportation works around the world. We have to figure out ways in which to ensure that uh, those trillions of dollars that are out there, which are currently 
not invested in the kinds of technologies that we need to see, the kinds of businesses that we need to see, the, the kinds of opportunities for livelihoods that we need to see, which are far more cleaner and greener. And it's a matter of being able to make the choice to be able to take those funds and put them towards, towards that future. With COVID, we have seen governments around the world put together these massive stimulus packages, these unprecedented amounts of money that are going in to help support economies to, to recover. When you look under the hood of many of those stimulus packages, you can see countries are picking winners and losers. They're picking industries that they're going to support and industries that may be left behind. If, if one thing has been made even more clear during COVID, it is that the systemic inequities in the world are deep, which also, no surprise, have a direct correlation to climate change. And this issue is, is really no longer very about the future. Um, it, it is very much about the present. It, it's about today. And that is the urgency that we bring to our work at UNDP. COVID is just a dress rehearsal for what climate change will bring to us. And so this ability to come together is something that is going to be very critical for us to learn now. We are so interconnected and we need each other if we're going to, quite frankly, get out of this mess. I would assume that nobody wants to live in a polluted world. It's not pleasant. Nothing is you know, disconnected from the realities of of the, the foundation of nature on which we rely. Um, and, and that is a, a truth that I think we simply as individuals need to embrace. You know, in international negotiations, we talk a lot about what it means to have a more prosperous and inclusive future. What it means to have everyone to be able to have access to sustainable development. But what that really means is helping people to have choices, helping people to be able to choose their future. The big changes have to happen at a policy level. We've seen in great movements uh, throughout history and around the world that it is people who push those elected leaders and those officials to do the right thing. And if enough of us come together and make that push and demand that our planet and the people inhabiting her are prioritized, it's, it's gonna make a difference.